Okay. Two partners from a small law, law firm, firm, a small law firm was having lunch and suddenly one of them looked alarmed. He announced, I have to get back to the office right away. I forgot to lock the safe. What are you worried about, the other partner says. We're both here. Do you, do lawyers trust lawyers? Does, does anyone trust a lawyer? Can you trust anyone these days? If not, we're all in deep trouble. Trust is a real problem in our society. Have you ever heard of the TV reality show Survivors? Every week they have a different contest to see who will win immunity and keep them from getting kicked off the show. The Survivor contestants talk to one another in small groups trying to gain support from one another. It's a matter of trusting one another. But the truth is, no one trusts anyone else. And why? Because the last remaining survivor will win a million dollars. And when you're talking about the possibility of winning money, no one trusts anyone. In fact, when it comes to money, most people trust, won't trust anyone. Would you mind loaning me a thousand bucks? No? Well, then how about a hundred dollars? You see what I mean? This is pretty much the way it is in life. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's every man, woman, and child for themselves. This is why many people are not trustworthy. We are self-centered, self-absorbed. You know the whole list. We're out to take care of number one. Here's another story of distrust. It was dated back in November 17th in 2005. Calling her actions a new law, a federal judge today imposed a five-year prison term for a former Shreveport, Louisiana woman who lied and told people she had an inoperable malignant brain tumor in order to get thousands of dollars from them. You have breeded distrust where there was no distrust before, Judge Maurice Hicks told Tina Larry as he sentenced her in federal court in Shreveport. Ms. Larry, he said, <clears throat> was trying to create a perpetual money machine. It is indeed a new law. Tina's ex-husband was a former Shreveport police officer his name, Tony Larry, was sentenced along with her and received a three-year, five-month sentence. The Larrys, both 38, were both convicted of conspiracy charges earlier this year. She had pleaded guilty earlier to health care fraud and also to filing bogus claims in the city's dental insurance plan. The same jury acquitted Larry's of charges they conspired to burn down the rental home to collect insurance money. That jury also acquitted Tony Larry, who insisted he knew nothing of his wife's scheme of the fraud charges against him. Tina Larry cried as she spoke to the judge about leaving her children behind and told of a lie that snowballed. I just got caught up in something I created, she said. I'm not as smart as you guys have given me credit for. I'm very sorry for every person I hurt, she says. I feel like a fool and I'm embarrassed. I don't have a criminal heart. I don't have a criminal mind, said she. Afterwards, the assistant U.S. attorney replied, well, she's good. I'll give you that. I don't have a criminal heart. Well, what kind of heart and mind do you have, lady? Greed is good to many people and they'll lie in every conceivable way to get money. Is there anybody out there we can trust? 
There's a famous preacher, I'm sure you all heard of Dwight Moody. He once said, trust in yourself and you are doomed to disappoint. Trust in your friends and they will die and leave you. Trust in money and you may have it taken from you. Trust in your reputation and some slanderous tongue will blast it. But trust in God and you are never to be confounded in time or eternity. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Trust in Yahweh with all thy heart and learn not unto, lean not unto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. Psalms 118 verse 8 says, It is better to trust in Yahweh than to put confidence in man. Psalms 146.3 Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. A lot of people out there are putting trust in all these political candidates right now. Kenyon, one of our favorite preachers. I never once saw Kenyon falter and fail when it comes to the faith. I'm sure that he knew when he faltered, but I never saw it in him. I always considered him a man who could be trusted no matter what. He never once failed me. However, as good as Kenyon is, and is to my eyes, he cannot save me. All he can do is tell you how to be saved. At other times I had put my trust and faith in people whom I knew were very human and I thought also faithful. But I found out I was wrong. I have discovered that some people will not only fail you but also deceive or betray you. Just as Judas betrayed the Lord with a kiss. It's sad to think that there are some people you can't trust, but if there is one person we can trust, it's the Lord. He remains trustworthy even when human beings are not. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13. If we believe not, yet he abides faithful, he cannot deny himself. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Know therefore that Yahweh thy Elohim, he is Elohim, the faithful Elohim, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 9, Yahweh is faithful, by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Yeshua Messiah. Our Lord. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, There has no temptation taken you but such as common to man, but Yahweh is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. And then we have Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Yahweh can be trusted even when we don't understand all of his dealings with mankind. He is the Mount Everest of trust. In this message, uh, I want to consider some of the benefits or blessings of putting our trust in Yahweh and Yeshua and not man. We have delivery from evil. Remember the phrase, God helps those who help themselves? Where is that in the Bible? It's not. And it's not a biblical truth. The Bible's truth is this. Yahweh helps those who can't help themselves. You want proof of this? Will your righteousness take you to the kingdom of heaven? 
Isaiah 64 verse 6 but we are all as unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away second Corinthians 521 says for he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of Yahweh in him Yeshua is our righteousness we are unrighteous without his righteousness there is no salvation Yahweh helps those who can't help themselves Psalm 22 verse 8 he trusted on Yahweh that he would deliver him let him deliver him seeing he delights in him from what from what does Yahweh deliver us from all kinds of evil that can happen in our lives I think many times we've been spared and protected and delivered and we never knew it or perhaps we saw it sometimes later after the fact Yahweh is our deliverer from evil Proverbs 29 verse 25 the fear of man brings a snare but whoso puts his trust in Yahweh shall be safe and Psalms 56 11 says in Elohim have I put my trust I will not be afraid what man can do unto me Psalms 91 verse 21 I will say of Yahweh he is my refuge and my fortress my Elohim in him will I trust in Matthew 6 verse 13 and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen you know someone wrote all I will ever need to know I learned from Noah first don't miss the boat second remember that we are all in the same boat number three is plan ahead it wasn't raining when Noah built the ark four stay fit when you're 600 years old someone may ask you to do something really big and five don't listen to critics just get on with the job that needs to be done and six build your future on high ground seven speed isn't everything the snails were on board with the cheetahs and eight when you're stressed float a while number nine remember the ark was built by amateurs the Titanic by professionals number ten no matter what the storm when you are with Yahweh there's always a rainbow waiting Noah was a man of faith Noah trusted Yahweh and what did Yahweh do for him and his family obviously he saved them Yahweh saved Noah and his family from certain destruction Yahweh can be trusted to do that for us as well he can deliver us from certain destruction and all evil <clears throat> perhaps you've read this book or have you seen the story a movie the cross and the switchblade the story of David Wilkinson first five years in New York is told in the cross and the switchblade a book he co-authored in 1963 the book became a best-selling phenomenon and more than 15 million copies have been distributed in over 30 languages 1969 a motion picture of the cross and the switchblade was released starring Pat Boone as David Wilkinson and Eric Estrada as Nikki Cruz the teen gang member whose life was dramatically transformed by Messiah Nikki was only three and a half years old when his heart turned to stone as one of 18 children born to a witchcraft practicing parents from Puerto Rico bloodshed and mayhem were common occurrence in his life 
He suffered severe physical and mental abuse at their hands. At one time being declared the son of Satan by his mother while she was in a spiritual trance. When he was 15, Nikki's father sent him to visit an older brother in New York. Nikki didn't stay with his brother very long. And instead, full of anger and rage, he chose to make it on his own. <clears throat> Tough but lonely, by age 16, he became a member of the notorious Brooklyn street gang known as Mamaws, named after the bloodthirsty African tribe. Within six months, he became their president. Cruz fearlessly ruled the streets as warlord of one of the gangs most dreaded by rivals and police. Lost in the cycle of drugs and alcohol and brutal violence, his life took a tragic turn for the worse after a friend and fellow gang member was horribly stabbed and beaten and died in Nicky's hands. As Cruz's reputation grew, so did his haunting nightmares. Arrested countless times, a court-ordered psychiatrist announced Nikki's fate as headed to prison, the electric chair, in hell. No authority figure could reach Cruz until he met a skinny street preacher named David Wilkinson. He disarmed Nikki, showing him something he'd never known before. Relentless love. His interest in the young thug was persistent. Nicky beat him up and spit on him and on one occasion seriously threatened his life. Yet the love of Yahweh remained stronger than any adversary Nicky had ever encountered. The story of David Wilkinson and the salvation of Nicky Cruz could only have happened because the faithfulness of Yahweh and his power to deliver people from evil. What Yahweh did for David Wilkinson and what he did for Nikki Cruz, he can do for us too. Yahweh can be trusted to deliver us from evil. Then we have delight in the spirit. In Psalms 28 verse 7, Yahweh is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoice and with my song will I praise him. My heart greatly rejoiced. That sounds like delight to me. When we learn to trust him fully, he brings joy into our lives and spirit. In Romans 15 verse, 15 verse 13, Now the Elohim of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. A man by the name of Richard Weathersfield, at age 22, having studied piano, violin, and voice, got his first chance to conduct an orchestra. The moment I picked up the baton, I knew this was what I wanted to do. But his parents, however, urged him to move, be more practical, so he got a master's degree in business and took a well-paying position in international investment banking. But Richard's passion for music never ebbed. After putting in 12-hour days at Wall Street, he'd stay up nights writing music scores. His vacations were spent guest conducting for orchestras around the country. In one year, he got his big break when a famous European conductor, Eric Leinsdorf, had to bow out of five guest appearances with the New York Philharmonic Orchestra. Westfield, who was his understudy, took over to critical acclaim. In the last night of the Philharmonic, Richard learned that his father had terminal cancer. And I realized then that life is too short not to do what you really, what is really important for it, to you. He quit his job and started fulfilling his passion, full-time conducting. So he earns half of what his old job was. He had to simplify his life, but he had finally found the joy he never knew in business. There are many people who are not happy, and it's simply because they have followed the wrong pursuit in life. No matter what we do in life, no matter how much money we make, there will never be any great joy or delight until we are linked up with Yahweh and Yeshua. Now why is this true? 
because deep in the heart of every person looms the certainty of death. And when death is on the horizon and you are not sure of what is going to happen to you, how can anyone find joy or delight in this life? However, on the other hand, if you know where you are going when this life is over and you are certain of eternal life, how can you not experience a certain amount of joy? Psalms 28, 7, Yahweh is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him. I am helped, therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. We must believe Yahweh's word. We must trust him. He can be trusted. Colossians 3 verse 1, If you then be risen with Messiah, seek those things which are above, where Messiah sits on the right hand of Yahweh. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Messiah in Yahweh. If we are ever going to find any happiness in this life, then we must realize there is more to life than this life. We must focus on that which is eternal. We need to change our focus from earth to eternity. We must anticipate, not dread, what is going to happen. We must glory in it, prepare for it, sing about it, dream about it, live for it. To find some happiness in this life and be effective as a believer, we must set our focus on eternity in the kingdom of Yahweh. There's more to come. More life to come, especially to the follower of Yeshua Messiah. There is good to come. The greatest good of all. And this great good brings delight to our souls. Charles Spurgeon is England's best known preacher in the 1800s. He often preached to audiences of 10,000 people without a PA system. He said one time, I would recommend you either believe God to the hilt or else not believe at all. Believe this book of God, every letter in it, or else reject it. There is no logical standing place between the two. You can't pick and choose. It's either Yahweh's word or it's not. It's either the truth or it's not. Believe Yahweh to the hilt. Believe Yeshua to the hilt. We must trust the Lord and nothing but good will come from it. Make a commitment in your life to trust him even more. Yahweh bless.